What's up guys, it's Aristov FPV here with a second endurance attempt after fixing the power rail issue that happened after modifying my 1.6 meter VTL pusher platform for extended flight times and distance travel. The aircraft got a separate BEC now to power the VTL servos and their signal cables to the signal ports on the flight controller, but that wasn't everything. As you guys have probably seen in the DVR footage of its previous video, the aircraft had quite low amp draw according to the OSD footage as it sustained altitude with just 3 amps and sometimes even 2 in very windy conditions. These kind of amp numbers are only seen on my FPV flying wing platform which is so much sleeker and lighter in comparison. So with that suspicion in mind I connected a Hobby King power meter between the battery and flight controller and found out that the flight controller was off by double the amperage, meaning if it shows 2 amps in the OSD it actually does 4 according to the power meter and when it's doing 3 amps it actually does 6 and so forth. So after a little research and a website that calculates your offset I managed to fix the inaccurate power readings by adjusting the voltage and power scale on the flight controller and it was pin perfect afterwards. So the goal of this particular endurance flight was to have an approximate measure on how much the aircraft improved its efficiency in flight time after its recent modifications. And these were in short further improvement of the curved wingtips, readjusting the length of the video transmitter antenna, replacing a 12x6 prop with a 12x8, replacing the old and bugged out flight controller with a brand new one, and having a redesigned nose section for the FPV camera only, thus omitting the extended nose design for HD cameras and panning devices. So with the calmest available day scheduled to do the endurance flight, I charged up one of my 4S 9600mAh lithium ion batteries and the 3S 6400mAh ground station battery and got to my favorite flying spot to attempt my second endurance flight. But little did I know that the weather conditions unexpectedly changed up on me and made it the worst endurance flight experience I ever had. But anyhow, here are the stats of the previous endurance flight which shows a flight time of 1 hour and 42 minutes, a total distance travel of 57 kilometers and 127 million parts per kilometer efficiency. And the main objectives were then to attempt a 2 hour flight time, reach 70 kilometers of total trip distance and try to drain at least 8000 million bars of the battery pack before considering to land. So I'm in the front seat of the car and I'm just having the uh, FPV screen on my lap just to enjoy the view like that. And obviously I got every cable running through this little gap that I tried to make as small as possible to the inside to protect myself from the bugs that are also very, very present at the moment. I got the DVR just hanging right next to me so that I could press record and stop it whenever I want it. Got some sweets and snacks and a JBL music box to enjoy the flight as much as possible. So being approximately 15 minutes in after the uneventful takeoff, I just enjoyed myself doing low passes with relatively low amps to maintain the altitude and kept cruising like that. So at 44 minutes into the flight, just cruising around, I noticed the weather conditions just abruptly changing on me by increasing its wind speeds and letting down a lot of drizzle which eventually turned into rain. And I got pretty annoyed because nothing was foretold by the weather applications that I used to foretell the weather conditions. So I contemplated to bring down the plane and abort the endurance flight, but then I saw it as an opportunity to see if my plane could handle these drizzly and nasty weather conditions and endure into them until my expectations were met. So I saw it as a multi-purpose endurance flight and kept going. Being 60 minutes into the flight now was getting very hard to maintain the altitude that I want to maintain with relatively low amps, which is approximately 4 to 4.5, but now being like over 5.5 amps due to the weather conditions.
been at approximately 81 minutes into the flight, I noticed these fog bangs appearing underneath the aircraft and this kind of enhanced the FPV experience somewhat, unlike the weather conditions of course. And a couple of minutes later, after noticing the fog banks and flying in and out of them, I noticed my pitch control being weird. I was afraid that I messed up one of my VTL servos, which is responsible for pitch control. But then after the landing, I found out that the carbon support rod, which holds the VTLs very sturdy, came loose on one of the sides and caused the VTL to be very flimsy and flexy in flight. At this moment in flight, I am flying for 100 minutes or 1 hour and 40 minutes, which meant that I am about to break my previous record of 1 hour and 42 minutes. And if you look at the bottom right, you would see that I have only consumed 6,722 milliamp hours, but have already surpassed 60 kilometers of total trip distance. So I was quite glad at the moment to see the 60 kilometer number appear and hope to still reach 70 kilometers because that was the objective. And after one hour and 59 minutes of struggling to maintain my altitude in these nasty, harsh weather conditions, I finally let go of my throttle control and glided back to myself. If I look at the conditions which turned up on me like this, I'm quite satisfied with two hours and one minute and just shy of 70 kilometers of total range. I mean, if you just look at the state of the aircraft, I mean, the wings which produce the lift got completely consumed by the vapor of the low altitude clouds, which I flew into and over throughout most of the flight. And if you notice as well, this uh, hot glue joint came loose for the V-tail which holds it sturdy, otherwise it'll flex a lot. I noticed my pitch being weird and now I know why. And I mean, there's no lift, there's no sun, there's no nothing but breezy winds and rain. And I still managed to fly for two hours actually and just, just shy of 70 kilometers, which was the number I hoped to get i could have dared myself to glide a little longer but i mean i saw the battery being at like 12.2 volts so i didn't want to push the lock any further um and i just wanted to preserve that for an upcoming final endurance flight which is going to be on a sunny day just the exact opposite of what i got today so comparing the two post-flight stats together, I could bring two things together, and that is weather conditions and efficiency. Knowing that my conditions at this time were so much worse because wind conditions were similar, but this time I had rain, drizzle, fog, and, and everything else with it, which makes it very much harder for the plane to do its endurance flight, it still manages to be more efficient. With 150 million parts per kilometer and over two hour flight time result in the worst possible weather conditions leaves the question mark on how much better it'll perform when it's flying in the most optimal conditions, meaning almost no wind and a very sunny day. 
So there's a third and final endurance flight attempt with this particular V-tail pusher design to see how much potential it actually has with its current setup. But that is up for the future with a couple of in-between videos and projects, including a very, very exciting build video that you guys do not want to miss. I'm very, I'm very, very excited about this one. But thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please leave a like if you enjoy it and to support the channel. I have an Instagram account. I have an Instagram page right now, aristuff.fpv. So so if you want to interact with me on there, feel free to do so. And you guys could also see what I'd going on before I release any of my videos on there as well. So thank you guys so much for watching again, and I'll see you guys in the next video.